Okay, um, our next presentation I need to set up just a, just a little bit before these gentlemen start. Um, every year as we, um, um, our jurors get together and select finalists within each category, um, uh, when the finalists are selected, we um, submit some of the finalists up to an executive committee at Bentley who go through the finalists and actually um, um, look for special awards winners. Well, this year, uh, Parsons Brinkerhoff uh, and Over both had submitted the Airport Link uh, Northern Busway uh, Windsor to Kendron, an airport roundabout upgrade in two different categories, as I believe it's completely two separate companies, if I remember the way you guys. You did submit them as consortium? Okay, as joint venture in both cases. But they were submitted, this project was submitted in both the um, Connecting Project Teams and Innovation and Roads. And in the few years that I've been involved in um, uh, be inspired, this is the first time that we had the same project from two different categories become a finalist in both categories. And it is an outstanding project. Uh, and as a result, the executive committee has selected, uh, selected this project, the North Airport Link project, as uh, the winner of sustaining our society, which is Mr. Bentley's personal <laughs> category, which <clears throat> is very, very good. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to have two presentations um, today on uh, this project. Uh, the first presentation we're going to do just before lunch. The next one we'll come back and finish uh, and do a second part on part two. And on the first part of the pres uh, presentation, we're going to focus, uh, the gentlemen are going to focus on innovation and roads. Uh, and then uh, after lunch, we'll focus on connecting project teams. So uh, it's uh, just a little description on the project. It's a leading edge on many levels. The Airport Link project has delivered an economic and social legacy for broader Brisbane community and is literally to redefine the urban fabric of the city through an innovative and inspired design. The Airport Link project took an approach that is strongly recognized by communities and clients increasingly expect urban design excellence to be a key feature of major infrastructure projects. Bentley software is used to design micro, uh, was used for design, microstation, MX roads, inroads, structural modeler, and Ghent. The project collaboration was done with ProjectWise. Presenting this project will be Mark Pettis, Technical Lead for Highways and Design, and Andrew Lewis, Modeling and uh, Leader in ProjectWise. Uh, you got trunk, administrator, you got trunked off. <laughs> administrator, sorry about that. And uh, Mark, you going to start? Uh, or Andrew's going to start. And here's Andrew. Thank you, Bob. Um, well, I'm going to mouse here. Um, afternoon, everybody. I'm, I'm Andy Lewis from Arabs in Brisbane. Also with me today, we've got Mark Pattis from Parsons Brinkerhoff in Brisbane also. And we're here today to talk about the Airport Link project. This was a joint venture between uh, Arab and Parsons Brinkerhoff for this uh, major project. If you do have any difficult questions today, can you please direct them to that gentleman over there? And don't, and don't, uh, don't bother myself or Mark. <laughs> Just to put it in context, where is Airport Link? It's actually in the southeast corner of Queensland. Uh, that's Brisbane that you can see there. Um, just to give you a bit of uh, scale, uh, Brisbane Metro is about 2 million population. We've got a 3 million population all up in southeast Queensland. The overall size of southeast Queensland there, there's only 4.5 four million people all up. So there's a whole lot of nothing once you get out, outside the southeast corner, pretty much. It looks a bit like that. We spend most of our time on the beach. Mark's little beach house is somewhere up in the corner there. Um, the project, as Ron mentioned, there's actually three separate projects. We've actually got the Northern Busway, which is a three-kilometre two-way section of dedicated busway running from uh, Bowen Hills to Kedron. Then we've got the Airport Roundabout Upgrade, which is a three-level fast diamond intersection at the intersection of Brisbane's east-west arterial and the north-south uh, north uh, main distributor in Queensland. Plus, it gives access into the airport. Then there's the Airport Link M7, 6.7 k's of two-way toll road. The vision of the project, um, to reduce traffic congestion by some 45%, fairly significant amount, uh, as you can see, um, provide an alternative access for the northern CBD, um, providing better connectivity for the local communities in this area, uh, giving them access through in and around the northern suburbs, and then to fix one of the state's most notorious bottlenecks, where, we've got queue, where we used to have queuing on the actual Bruce Highway. Just as a, an example, the travel time from airport to the northern suburbs is expected to be about 10 minutes, cutting out about 18 sets of traffic lights when you go through the tunnel. 
how the how the project or how the need for the project was established. Uh, Queensland Government developed the, C the Secret Plan, South East Queensland Infrastructure Plan and Programme, which looks at the 20-year strategy for the development of infrastructure, including transport and water throughout C South East Queensland. Brisbane City Council then developed on that plan and developed the Trans Apex Programme, which was uh, designed to actually connect Brisbane's arterials and motorways, fill in the missing gaps, if you like. Um, does it, no. Um, if you look at that little triangle there, Brisbane CBD is in the middle, and you've got uh, the Brisbane River sort of meandering or in and around the CBD. The first project to be constructed for the Trans Apex Plan was uh, the Clem 7, formerly known as the NSBT Tunnel. That went north-south and came out of ground at the uh, northern suburbs. Two was the Hale Street Link, which was a new connection over the Brisbane River. And then three, which was Airport Link, connecting the northern suburbs to the airport. Oh, thank you connecting the northern, uh, to the airport and the north-south distributor. Number four is currently, number four is currently being uh, constructed now, which is Legacy Way. That was formerly known as Northern Link. And then we've got project number five there at the bottom, which is going to be the east-west link, which is probably a number of years away yet. Um, just a little bit about the Brisbane, how the project came about, if you like. Uh, there was an expression of interest that was issued by the Queensland Government in, in 2006 to design, build and operate under a PPP funded model, Airport Link, Northern Busway and the Airport Roundabout Upgrade. upgrade. The Briz Connections Consortium was formed. This consisted of Briz Connections PPP company that are now operating the tunnel. Macquarie Group was the main financier, Deutsche Bank as underwriter and then Thyssen John Hollands as the design and construct contractor. This is where we came in. Uh, Parsons, Brinkerhoff and Arab joined forces and we were responsible for the design and construct uh, of the project and the CPS uh, services, construction phase services. The bid was uh, following the EOI. There was a 12 month tender period. The bid was submitted in December 2007. Um, we used a six ton truck to deliver some 35 boxes of bid documents, just to give you the scale of the bid. Um, and Briz Connections was identified as a preferred the preferred proponent in May of 2008, beating two other consortia. Bit of a project overview. This is the yeah. This is the southern connection of Bowen Hills. This is a multi-surface interchange connecting the Clem Savile and the ICB. There's 16 bridges in this area. The, the biggest being a 33-span bridge. Um, there you go. Sorry, it's not updating on you, so just pull. Start that again. I'll start that again, sorry. Southern Connection of Bone Hills. This is a multi-surface interchange connecting the Clem 7 and the ICB. There's 16 bridges in this area. 33 span bridge being the longest. It's also got a box, steel box girder bridge over the Bre Kedron over the Brecky Creek and a buried, partially buried vent station and a cut and cover 220 metres long. The cut and cover is actually fully submerged with parkland over. This section was mined tunnel, three lanes north-south between Bowen Hills and Kedron. There were some 17 road headers on the project all up. Kedron, this is one of the most complex areas in the project. There's an underground interchange that's been designed in Kedron. That's housed in a very large cut and covered structure, some 28 metres wide at its widest, 25 metres deep and some 300 metres long. Thought to be one of the largest in the world. Some other stats in there which I can't go through. That's a picture of Kedron where you can see the cut and covers coming out. Sorry, the tunnels coming out. North south, uh, the bypass, the northern busway. This is running at grade. Uh, runs for about three kilometres. And I've lost where I am. And it's got a 1.5 kilometres of tunnel and uh, cut and cover. Sorry, the mouse has disappeared on screen. Yeah, why isn't it all... Uh, better pause that while I catch up. I'll let that run again. I fast forward it. Sorry, I have to be patient.
Does anybody know what that one is? That's Southern Connection. <laughs> bit of mine tunnel coming next, followed by a bit of busway. So Northern Busway started at uh, Southern and went through from Bowen Hills to Kedron. Fairly complex infrastructure, you can see there. This is the mine tunnel. So three lanes north-south between Bowen Hills and Kedron. Then you get into Kedron, where you've got the underground interchange and the big box cavern, which we'll talk about a little bit later. At its most complex, that box cavern had five levels of structure. It's also, just for complexity, the lowest point in the project, so everything drains to Kedron, which we had to remove. Some fairly uh, tough geotechnical conditions as well. That's some of the uh, complexity. You can see the tunnels under, the actual complex is further back. This is Northern Busway at grade. Two, bu two new bus stations. The Lutwich bus station was sunk into the terrain to remove the impact on the environment. Very good connectivity at Lutwich. It's Lutwich bus station. Then you've got the TBM. The, the TBMs actually went in the opposite direction. They went east-west. Then you run it. So there were two twin 12.4 meter diameter tunnel boring machines, some of the biggest that have ever been used in Australia. Then you get to Eastern, Eastern Connection. There's an intersection at Sandgate Road and the east-west arterial. There's a large jackbox structure which Mark is going to talk about, and the TBMs were launched east-west in this direction. That's the jackbox. And there was a living green wall as you approach the tunnel and come into Airport Link. This is the Airport Roundabout Upgrade. Uh, that's the existing gateway motorway. We had to realign a portion of the gateway motorway. And then we had to build a fast diamond interchange uh, on the intersection of the east-west arterial and the gateway motorway. This included a 700-metre segmental bridge up and over the gateway motorway into the airport. That's kind of what it looks like there. That's the big bridge up and over into the airport, into the distance. And that's how we split the project down. So we've got Southern Connection, Northern Busway, Kedron, Eastern, and then Airport Roundabout Upgrade. So although I said there was three projects, we've actually split it down further into sort of design packages uh, and areas. I'm um, just running through the stats. There's uh, 15 k's of tunnel all up, 10 k's of mine tunnel, 17 road headers included in that, 5 kilometres of board tunnel. It's two of the largest TBMs ever used in Australia. There's a state-of-the-art fire system, which Mark will talk a little bit, of, little bit about later. There's 28 multi-span bridges in total. Um, the tallest being 25 metres high, the longest 750 metres in length. We, we cast 3,500 bridge beams and deck units for, for the bridges, and there were some 15,000 piles sunk across the project. All up, there were 15 cut and cover uh, structures, Kedron being the biggest at the 28 metres wide and 300 metres long. There were three vent stations at Eastern, Southern and Kedron, an operations centre at Kedron, Jackbox at Southern, one of the biggest in the world, 7 k's of new roadway, 13 kilometres of cycleways and pathways, 3.5 hectares of new parkland, across the project. One million trees have been planted and there's 22 heritage sites that we had to protect during the construction process. All up, $5.6 billion project that was designed and built in four years and two months. A bit about the PBA design team. Um, the mobilization of the, project was, of the project team was pretty incredible, to be honest. Uh, work commenced on the day of the project that, when it was awarded in May of 2007. The project team leaders were at the temporary project office the next day and the mobilization started. Within three to four weeks we had 60 staff at the project office uh, and other staff working remotely around the Arab and PB world. By August we had a team of 200 and we moved into our final project office in Green Square in Brisbane. That grew to 250 pretty shortly afterwards. And then we had a much larger team, which we'll talk about this afternoon, across uh, the, the Arab and PB world. It was all up 2,000 plus people worked on the project. That's the Motley crew. Um, some of the Bentley products uh, were essential in us delivering the design for the project. Project-wise, number one, that was fundamental to the whole design process for us. It connected this massive team that we had. Uh, I'm not quite sure how we would have approached it without project-wise. 
Bentley MX was used for uh, primarily the, well, all of the roads, tunnels, and earthworks, plus uh, for some of the key structural components, setting out for the cut and covers and some of the bridges. Microstation was used across all disciplines. It was used in um, with Bentley Structural and Bentley Triformer. We tried to model as much as we could in Bentley Structural and Triformer so we could maintain those models afterwards and update them quickly, plus we could use it to extract the drawings, the sections, and the quantities. Uh, we used inroads uh, to verify some of the bridge design and the set out. GINT was used exclusively across the project for, for all of the uh, geotechnical uh, borehole data and the analysis. We had links developed between GINT and ArcGIS and that was bi-directional so we were pushing information and surfaces back and forth between GINT and we used RAM concept then for the structural design of some of the control buildings um, and the ops center. Bentley rebar was used on uh, uh, a dozen or so different locations where we had some pretty tough complex geometry of some concrete uh, connections. As you can imagine there's a lot of curved, curved elements and curved faces within the tunnels and the structures. This is where I hand you over to Mark, and Mark is going to talk about the project challenges and then get stuck into the nitty gritty of the roads. Great, thanks a lot, Andy. Um, I, I had the great privilege of being the um, technical leader for the highways team on this project, and it's not very often a project like this comes along. So I'm extremely proud of the work of the team, and, and uh, we, we put in a major, major amount of effort. and. Uh, the fantastic project to be involved in. Uh, later on, I'll just talk about some of the innovations in the, in the road design uh, component that we used, and also uh, leading into s some tunnel design practices as well. Uh, but just at the moment, uh, I'll, I'll try and highlight four of the major engineering challenges we faced. And with a project this, so this size, the sheer size of the project is a is a challenge in itself. But um, we'll just focus on some engineering ones. And we'll look at uh, the under, underground roadway interchange at Kedron, a uh, large jackbox structure at under a railway, live railway line, a uh, connection to a complex service interchange, so one that was already being built, and then also how, how built we build a and maintaining a fully functional um, congested interchange while we're upgrading the whole thing. Okay, Kedron in interchange, which Andy said was about in the middle of the project. Um, break away from the traditional um, concept of, of tunnels versus road interchanges. And no normally with tunnels uh, you try and limit the amount of mergers and diverges that happen. Uh, three lanes go in and three lanes come out the other end. But with, uh, with Kedron we integrated the whole, whole surface and, and uh, underground system together. And it generated up to five levels of roadway. So if we look in, on that uh, left-hand side, you see the, the grey is the, the road surface and the red are the overpasses, so bridge structures overpass. So there, there you've got two levels just sitting on the surface. Uh, the cut oh, go back there. The... Uh, Cutaway on, on the bottom here shows now the underground system. So we've got in, in orange, we've got the, uh, the underground ramps uh, diving into the tunnel. And up this end here, we've got them braiding over the top of each other. So it gives us another two levels of roadway. And then complicated with that is in, in the blue is the uh, busway tunnel sneaking past. And that goes underneath the whole lot, giving us the three levels underground and the two surface. All this combined gave us a uh, road cavern with a merge, which is 28 metres in width and up to 14 or 15 metres high. Uh, the next big challenge we faced was uh, how we were going to get underneath a, a live rail line, very shallow um, excavation uh, below the, the rail line going through the embankment. So we came up with a solution to provide a, a concrete jackbox structure, 45 metres wide, 50 metres long, and again about 14 or 15 metres in height. Involved shallow tunnelling underneath the major rail line. The constraints included keeping the rail operational at all times, and uh, disturbance to the rail geometry of no more than 10 millimetres, both horizontally and vertically. So a solution was the, the jackbox structure 
through the rail embankment we, and uh, while we didn't design the hydraulic system we certainly designed the, the box structure and uh, there's up to 38,000 tonnes of force pushing on the structure to, to get it underneath the rail line. If we look at this picture here we've got the rail line keeping live and then we had to put our structure underneath there and some of the construction methodology. You can see inside it was segmented into little pigeonholes and each of those pigeonholes has got an excavator inside digging away at the, at the face and then the whole, whole thing was pushed in behind that and kept up that sequence going. Uh, next challenge we found was uh, connecting into a, an already complex interchange and uh, providing more connection ramps to it. At the time we were designing it was still being built um, and there were some legal implications. We couldn't get hold of their models so we had to recreate our, our uh, road and, and structural models just from the, the as-built drawings uh, and then supplemented by some, some as-built construction as it came through. You can see here just on this picture here the, the ramps outlined in, in orange are the ones that were existing or being built and then the, the white ones are the ones we've come over the top and connected in. So you can see we've got some quite complex connections into those structures. Uh, fourthly, we'll talk about maintaining an operational interchange and the one at the airport roundabout upgrade driven by major congestion, so it was a known bottleneck. Um, we had to keep it operational at all times. So the strategy was uh, is we've got the north north south arterial there, you've got existing roundabout underneath and then east west connectivity running through to the airport. So we built our first structure offline to keep the, the north south running. Then we shifted our traffic over there. Oops, different orientation, sorry, but the, that's the traffic shifted onto the new structure and then we could start building a east-west structure over the top. And then the final result, you can see there the north-south, north we've got the east-west coming over the top and a fast diamond interchange replacing the, the roundabout. So they're all fairly significant. And through the process of fully modelling the whole, uh, the whole uh, design, we could uh, quickly do some, some drive-throughs and visualisations to prove, prove up, particularly through our temporary staging, that we could get all the, all the geometrics to work OK. OK, and then that leads us on into innovation in the roads. Now, a road wrapped in rock, it was quite important right from the start that uh, we recognised this was essentially a road project. We were getting traffic from A to B. Um, it was quite funny at the start. Um, we had everybody keen and coming in and wanting to do their bit on, on the project, and particularly the tunnellers. They, they were diving straight in and wondering where they were going to dig and what their profiles were going to look like. And our engineering manager had to say, well, hold back, this is just a road wrapped in rock, so we've got to make sure our line geometry is OK, and then you guys can come in and, and do what you, can, what you need to. So we used Bentley MX Road to set our alignments and uh, initial modelling of the tunnel surfaces. This, this is a, a, a known workhorse in this environment. We've used it before and been able to produce detailed design. And we've had some customised routines and it provided the integration into project-wise that we're after so that we could get that data to, to other disciplines. Uh, project size, we had 22 full-time Amex designers um, split into the five different uh, areas and uh, so integration and uh, collaboration was paramount. At the start of the project we recognised that we were going to be delivering the 3D model as to be constructed in the field. So it was important we, we developed a, a fairly rigorous uh, revisioning system for that, uh, for that model. Uh, we had 
revisioning system for, uh, for drawings, and we had to do the same thing for our model. And MX, with our custom macros, allowed us to, to automate a lot of that process. So typically with a road project, we'd have our, our model linked to plans, long sections and cross sections. And so we devised the revision process as we're working through our, our design. At certain critical points, we'd, we'd know we'd be able to uprev up the, the actual model itself. And again, by having our automated routines, we could just, once we could type in, in our input file, the, uh, the model version, and then they'd, they'd get automatically um, stamped on, our, on all, all our drawings. So it was a very good cross-reference between what was in the model and uh, what was on the drawings. And then made it easy once we bundled the whole thing up and sent it out to site. We knew we were very confident in the product that we were giving. Now it's uh, being spared as being the, the safest tunnel in the world. And uh, a lot of this has been driven around not just a performance based approach, so providing a performance based re approach to design of the, the tunnel system as, a, as opposed to just using prescriptive standards. Um, Utilise the smoke ducts above the road. So rather than just sucking the, if there's a fire incident occurs, rather than just sucking the, the, the smoke and the gas along the tunnel, um, there's a separate enclosed system in the ceiling of the tunnel which dampers open, extract out the smoke, take it to the vent stations and doesn't affect other people inside the actual tunnel itself. Uh, it's got a deluge system as opposed to just a sprinkler system and uh, this is fairly unique to Australia and New Zealand and I think they're starting to develop it over in Japan at the moment as well. But this system of deluge isolates uh, an incident, so if a fire occurs, um, it'll just be a big dump of water over a, a 60 metre section of the, of the tunnel, and the, the steam produced from that, that big dump will then put out the fire. Okay. Um, just go on, a few other innovations in the, in the tunnels. So we, we're using MX Road to develop the alignments and the tunnel profiles. And uh, so in interaction with the tunnellers, constantly updating the, the profiles as we went through the iteration process, we could quickly, we could quickly, we could quickly see the interaction of the tunnels with each other as we're designing through. We've got here, we've got cross passages coming across, uh, Im impacts on land, so it's quite easy to visualise. Um, having a, a a surface generated MX allowed them the the tunnel designers to isolate critical areas, and then they'd fully fully model up those critical areas, so that uh, interaction of, of M and E equipment, all other disciplines could could occur. Uh, for emergency egress, we could work out how we're going to get people out of um, different areas in, if incidents occur. Uh, also the modelling of critical elements, so this is at one of these caverns and where we've got a couple of ramps coming out, so qu quite complex geometry for how those, how those tunnels interact and it can be very easily defined within the 3D environment. Verifying construction sequencing, op optimising timelines, so in this example here um, there's a change in methodology and uh, we had to identify, drop a shaft down, uh, excavate out a cross, a cross passage there so we could drop down four road headers and start mining in, in four separate phases just to speed up the construction process. Just in summary, um, integration and sharing of the models that we used through this process was critical on such a large scale. Uh, the designers working in parallel and concurrently on data, particularly the MX designers, was able to speed up the process and uh, the, we could ensure that models were accurate and provides confidence of our final op outputs to the contractor. And it's delivered us one of the world's safest tunnels. So with that I'll just finish this session.
and uh, take some questions if I can. Questions for Andy or, uh, or Mark? Or Marty, sitting down back there. Well, yes, a hard question back here. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen.